Hey guys, what's going on? Doc back at you with a little uh, patio porch talk here. Um, I was going to do a ride along for this one, but uh, eh. I feel like this might be a little bit too much of a niche one, so I think I'm going to put this more into uh, a relation perspective. Today I'm going to be talking about The Incredibles, since the new movie is going to be coming out on Friday. Um, or tomorrow. There is... Um, real, really no doubt in my mind that it's not gonna, like, knock my socks off since it's been about 14 years and Brad Bird, who makes the movie, worked on The Simpsons from 89 to 98 and, he, like, played a pretty big part and the first one's one of the best movies I've ever seen and he said he'd never make another one unless it was better so I'm guessing he didn't wait 14 years, like, for a paycheck. So, I think this one's gonna be a pretty good one and the main topic that I'm going to be have today is, uh... Not really a new correlation, but definitely a topical and interesting one nonetheless. It's between it's the one between uh, The Incredibles and Watchmen. I'm sure that you've, if you're a fan of either or both, yeah, you gotta be a fan of both then to make the connection, obviously, stupid me. But if you're a fan of both of them, then I'm sure you've seen some uh, pretty huge similarities. First and foremost is... Uh, Obviously, that they both involve a past that contained a gaggle of masked vigilantes who were uh, eventually outlawed in both of them. Um, was it uh, the Keen Act that outlaws them in Watchmen? And I don't remember what the name of the... I don't even know if they say what the name of the, the government act is that outlaws them in The Incredibles, but it's the same idea pretty much exactly, and that the superheroes could really only operate with the government and secretly in private sectors, kind of like how uh, some of our some of our veterans have to do it when uh, they come back and don't have anything to do. They both show the monotony that ensues in the aftermath of this government ban, this government ban, before being enlisted for a larger cause that reinvigorates the lives of all those involved in a vital and uh, very sexual way. In both stories, I'll go more into the sex part later, because both of these stories were heavily hinged on uh, the sexuality of the characters. Also, they had villains who were stringing the heroes along in an attempt to kill them after killing scores of others so that they couldn't get in their way for their master plan. Most contrasting, though, and exciting, is that the villain wins at the end of Watchmen. If you've read Watchmen, and the vil if you've seen or watched Watchmen, I mean, if you've seen or read Watchmen, you know that Adrian wins. Yo, Adrian, you won! No, but um, Ozymandias wins. Um, and if you haven't read it or seen it, I'm sorry, I just spoiled it for you. But uh, it's, it's, it's kind of, if, if you wanted to know, you should have known by now. While Syndrome is um, too much of a vain villain to be able to succeed. I mean, he's got the brains, he's got the technique, he's got the money. But um, he loses just because he's so vain, which Ozymandias isn't. Uh, and this leaves the Incredibles wide open to pursue these themes even further. And um, that's what I'm most excited about for this new movie, and that's pretty much why I'm spouting off here about this. Um, again, as opposed to Syndrome, Adrian Veidt is possibly one of the greatest villains ever. Not saying that Syndrome isn't one of the greatest, but I mean, Adrian's got it all. Hey, yo, Adrian, you got it all. Um, he's a genius, compounded with celebrity and superpowers. You pretty much have it all there. He embodies, like, ev he's the quintessential sellout who used their unparalleled talent to benefit themselves and try and make it look like they commit all of these selfless actions but they're really just to benefit their own ego or even just well-being uh syndrome botching his plan was pure hubris like it was just him thinking that he couldn't be stopped and that he could still succeed even while allowing the possibility of his failure which adrian Veidt wouldn't refuse to even tell what his plan was until it was actually set in mo had been set in motion and actually actually incidentally um syndrome's botch at the end almost turned into the new york massacre from the last chapter of watchmen this leads to another interesting segue in uh watchmen the actual costume villains were pretty much all but extinct all they had was um moloch who was just a dinosaur who was just a dinosaur and pretty much there just to be a red herring, basically, um, and to prove that they were all but extinct. 
And I mean, Syndrome was just that, too. He was a syndrome of all the worst effects of crime-fighting vigilantes. I mean, I don't know if it'll play out similarly with the villain in Incredibles 2. Uh, screen Slaver, it looks like he's called. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe he'll have the uh, the intellect of Adrian Veidt, and maybe he'll find a way. Or he, maybe it's a she. Who knows? Maybe he or she will find a way to win at the end, like at the end of Watchmen. Who knows? I guess we'll just have to wait and see if... Um, Brad Bird is willing to go that dark. I mean, the first one was pretty dark and sexy, so, I mean, he might have to double down on this one if he wants to keep the diehard fans happy. The other character relations are all a bit uh, ham-fisted. They're not really... They don't fit, like, uh, clean puzzle pieces other than Lori and uh, Helen, who are both lost in what is expected of them after they're married, you know, civilians. Yeah, married civilians in America, you pretty much are forced to be a housewife and live a boring-ass fucking monotonous life. Like I said, both of whom face the lonely monotony of American life until their lovers find themselves once again. When their li lovers find themselves once again in a sort of symbiotic sexual revival of both of their souls, they both come back to life. Um, it's very veiled in The Incredibles, but I mean, you, it's... They're, the the re-sparked sex life of the uh, the Incredibles is uh, definitely um, like a linchpin in what makes them strong enough to win in the end. And it's also interesting in the next one that um, the dynamic is going to be shifted in that she's going to be the one out fighting crime and Mr. Incredible is going to have to be the stay-at-home dad. So we saw him deal with that monotony in the original one, but um, it's a whole different kind of monotony when it's uh, dealing with kids. Trust me, I know. I work with kids. Um, but I, it, I'm just very interested to find out because a lot, a lot of people are thinking, oh, well, he copied Watchmen in the first one. Well, what's next? Well, he left a lot of things open. And he left a lot of space for... Uh, all those themes to evolve. He's got the kids that are going to be like teenagers now, all angsty. You know, there's a lot of possibility for some uh, Rorschachish behavior there. I don't know. Other than, I, I mean, I'm just very excited for this movie and um, thought that I would share my excitement and um, hopes and thoughts with you. But I mean, there's real, really no re need for a, a ride along because I can. There's 99% chance I'm telling you I'm going to drive home from that and I'm going to be speechless because I'm going to be a fucking giggling little child. Um, but if I did hate it, I am going to make another episode and I'm going to tell you why I hated it. Alright? So, until next time, creeps, this is Doc. Love you.